welcome. Welcome to Kini. Welcome. Mr. Beata. Happy Hi, birthday. Man. Here's Brother Rene. Elise. Oh, Brother Rene. Brother Rene. Uh, welcome. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good evening. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, good morning René. <laughs> oui, good morning, Hélène. Ça va bien? Oui, ça va. Ça va. Il est tout. Hein? Mais, merci d'être là, René. Est-ce que le frère Jean est toujours chez vous? Euh, oui, il est ici jusqu'à <coughs> jusqu dimanche. Ah bon? Vous le saluerez pour moi? Avec plaisir. Mais oui. Mais oui. D'ailleurs, aujourd'hui, il vient visiter notre communauté locale. Ah bon? Ah bon? Oui. Oui. Et oui. Et oui. Hey. Father Arnold, you're okay? Ah, voilà, Lian. There's Lian. Hello, Brother Arnold. Thank you, thank you. I'm very fine, Brother. Thank you. Welcome. Rita. Bonjour. Welcome, Salamat. Hey, Hi, sister. Father Armel from Cebu. Hello, Rita. Rita, you have no microphone. And Rita, hello, Hi, welcome. Hello. From hello. Saba. Uh, Sir Jelly Fernandez, welcome. Jelly. And Samuel Joshua, welcome. Who else? We have Ronald Aloysius. Is this Father Aloy? <clears throat> Uh, it could be. <laughs> Father Aloy from Papua New Guinea. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Good. Sister Lian, how are you? I'm still alive and kicking. Wow. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I'm still landing. Oh, still landing. <laughs> it's, it's another world here. <laughs> it's okay. I have very nice companions. Yeah. And many, 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 like I never had before. So that's another adjustment. Yeah. And we have COVID. Oh. Yes. We, we are... have COVID too. We have yes. COVID. Yes. Oh. Yeah, so. we have some sisters who are isolated. So our activities and we can, we can only talk to the people in our own uh, part of the building. And we eat together also, but not with the other ones. But we can go outside, but not outside the compound. Mm -mm. Okay, take care, sister. Take care. Yes. Yeah, this is the fourth year of COVID for us. Huh? Yeah, fourth year. Oh. Hmm. Ben oui, Hélène, notre supérieur général était supposé aller vous visiter. Oui. Mais à cause de la COVID, il ne peut pas. Ah non, puis on ne veut pas. On veut pas qu'il soit malade non plus. <rire> Pour sa dernière année. Father Ernest? Yes. Yes. Where are you now? Are you in Malawi or where? Well, come and see. Come and see. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My brother, come Some and day. see. <laughs> we, we, are, we are in Uganda. Oh, okay. In the novitiate. This is where our novitiate is. Yeah. It's a place called Mbarara. Okay. 
And How many now officers do you have? This year we have three, but we are going to receive four more. Nice. This, these three are going to profess on, uh, on 6th. They are beginning their retreat. After, after this talk, we begin a retreat. <laughs> oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there is there's Father Mario. Father Mario is around who is going to lead them in the retreat. Oh, oh. Mar Mario Bellotti? Father Mario, yes, Mario Bellotti, Bellotti is there? Ah, yes. So there are requests to him from the Philippines. You want to greet him? Yeah, greet him Let for us. I can call him, it's not far, I can call him here. Is not busy? No, it's, it's, he will be happy to greet you. Just a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm going where he is. He will be very happy to greet you. Just hold, keep on the screen. Yes, Father. Good. Yeah. Father Arnold. Hello. Someone that... wants to greet Father, Father Mario. You see, our house now is different. Huh? Hey. <laughs> I guess. So thank you, thank you for your for your goodness. Thank you, Father thank Mario. you to you all. Hey, Lala, how are you, Father Mario? Father Mario, agandang gabi, Father Mario. Father Mario. Hello. 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 Hey, well, look at him. <laughs> so, are you online? Yes, yeah. Father, how are you? Fine, fine, thanks, fine. See, nice I'm going to back to you. Africa. Uh, <laughs> and are you going to visit the Philippines again? Well, That's right. <laughs> maybe shortly, maybe at the end of November, who knows, after India. Ah, okay. Looking forward to, to in that. November. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Have a nice okay. work. Enjoy it. Yes. Thank, thank you. you, Father Mario. Thank you. Okay. So you're thinking, thinking, Father Mario. I think it's already six in the evening. Uh, I think we shall begin. So good morning for all those who are in New York and Quebec. And, and good afternoon for those who are in Rome, Nairobi, India, Indonesia, and Thailand. And good evening. For those who are in, Indone in uh, Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, Papua New Guinea, and Philippines. A blessed evening here from the Philippines to all of you. And welcome to our Monfortian Synodality, Monfortian family in Southeast Asia. Last uh, July 14, uh, the former Superior General of the Brothers, Montfort Brothers of St. Gabriel, who is with us here, Father Rene de Lomo, uh, uh, gave us a uh, uh, talk on Montfort as a missionary of mercy. And for this month of August, of July, <laughs> of July, we have a very intriguing and interesting topic and that is St. Louis Marie de Montfort's Maria Notebook Discovery, Analysis and Publication. Personally, uh, when I uh, learn about this uh, topic, uh, there are some questions in mind. What is this Maria Notebook all about? What additional knowledge of Montfort that we can draw from this Maria notebook? And where can we get copy of this uh, if this is available? And, uh, but before we continue 
further. May I request an associate of the Balfour Missionaries in the Philippines, Sister Jelly Soriano Fernandez, AMM, to lead us in our opening prayer. Thank you, Father Fred. Let us put ourselves in the presence of God and our Blessed Mother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God our Father, we are here once again under the guidance of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We thank you that as we come together now, we know that she had led us the way, fixing our schedules and preparing ourselves to open our minds and hearts to your loving advice. We pray that you send the Holy Spirit upon Sister Helen and to us all, your Montfortian family. May we, following the example of your son, Jesus, continue to support each other so that we continue to live in our communities in harmony as a sign of your great love. And today, although we are miles apart, you alone bind us together and keep us as one. This one big community, we pray, Hail Mary, well beloved daughter of the eternal Father, admirable mother of the Son, most faithful spouse of the Holy Spirit, glorious temple of the Blessed Trinity, hail sovereign queen to whom everyone is subject in heaven and on earth. Hail, sure refuge of sinners, our lady of mercy, who has never repelled anyone. Sinner as I am, I cast myself at your feet and beg you to obtain Jesus, your dear son, contrition and pardon for all my sins and the gift of divine wisdom. I consecrate myself to you with all that I have. I choose you today as my mother and mistress. Treat me then as the weakest of your children and the most submissive of your servants. Here, O Queen, the prayer of a heart that desires to love and serve you faithfully. It did not be said that of all who have ever had recourse to you, I was the first to be unheeded. O my hope, my life, my faithful and immaculate Virgin Mary, hear us, protect us. Strengthen us, instruct us, save us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ati Jelly, for that uh, prayer. And uh, we also welcome uh, those who are joining us via YouTube and Facebook. And, um, well, uh, I would like to introduce, I forgot. Uh, I am Father Frederick Yumang, SMM, uh, from the Philippines. I will be the one who will uh, be your moderator for, uh, for tonight's uh, virtual gathering. And um, I know we are all excited to know more about Father de Montfort's Marian notebook. But allow me first to introduce to you the person who will help us explore about Father de Montfort's Marian Notebook. Our speaker for today is a nurse by profession. She was born in Ottawa, Canada in 1940. In 1959, in the year of the second centenary of the death of Marie-Louise Trichier, she made her religious profession as daughter of wisdom. As a nurse, she specialized in intensive care and practiced her profession in Ontario, Alberta, Malawi, and Ethiopia. She obtained a master's degree in international development 
and she worked abroad and at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. She animated liturgical singing in several parishes in Ottawa. The importance of singing in her life led her to take an interest in the works of Father de Montfort, particularly his hymns. She completed doctoral training in practical theology at Laval University. Her doctoral thesis defended in 2011 was on popular religious song as an experience of God. She is the author of The Wisdom Sung by St. Louis Grignon de Montfort and Marie-Louise Trichet, The Transmission of Montfortian Wisdom. My dear Montfortian family, it is my honor to present to you our speaker for today, Sister Helen Lemed D.W., Daughter of Wisdom from Ottawa, Canada. Welcome, Sister. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's not there anymore. So for today, we'll be talking about Father de Montfort's Marian Notebook, Discovery, Analysis, and Publication. And uh, many of us, I'm sure, are not familiar with this uh, Marian Notebook. Uh, and uh, that is why it is very interesting to know more about this uh, topic. Uh, and uh, as uh, we're just waiting for the screen sharing of uh, Sister Helen, so that uh, she will help us explore about this interesting topic. Other de Montfort's Marian Notebook, Discovery, Analysis, and Publication. I don't know, it worked well a minute ago, and now uh, I don't know what's wrong. Okay, so we're, can you, we're can having a uh, slight, uh, problem with the, with the okay. it's coming. Yeah. So it's just prolonging our excitement about this topic of more more Marian notebook. <laughs> That makes it more interesting. Well, let us hope so. <laughs> more. Well, this, uh, let's, let me then, first uh, thank uh, Father Frederick for the presentation, which is always too long to my taste. And also thank Sister Jelly for the prayer. I want to issue a warning. The book that I will talk about is not one that most of you would want to quote primarily because although you will hear of many quotations, none are from Father de Montfort, 
They are the result of his readings. Even more importantly, he considered some of these quotations positively and others negatively as preparations for arguments on both sides. However, it is interesting to see where he picked up some of his expressions and ideas and where he started formulating his own spirituality. Here then is the context of this, the last known manuscript of Father de Montfort. This is a picture of the first, uh, the first page. The manuscript was handled by many people until, uh, until the, last, uh, the last two years, really, until I decided that I thought the manuscript should be kept in a museum and uh, we should print a copy of it. Now, <clears throat> I will be talking about the context. Let us place this presentation in a context that you probably know well, that of dates in the young Louis-Marie de Montfort's life. Between the years of 1695 to 1700, as he was studying philosophy and theology at the Sorbonne in Paris, he resided and participated in the life of the community at the small seminary of Saint Sulpice. As he had to contribute to his upkeep, he had a part-time job in the house library, which proudly demonstrated that it received all recently published books in theology. Louis Marie, as we know from seeing Sir. his writing Sister. in the library. Sister. 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 We're not seeing the your presentation. The one you shared on the screen. Pardon? The PowerPoint is not displayed, Sister. Yeah. It's not displayed? No. Oh, okay, well, I can see it. Okay, I will stop sharing it and uh, I, yeah. will re I will reintroduce it then. Yeah, can you open it first before you share? Yes, well, it was open for me. Do you see it now? Yes, yes. Do you see it now? Yes. Now we see. It. Yeah. Yes, sister. Okay. So that was uh, the, the 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 plan, and then I went on to show this picture. Do you see it? Yes. Okay. That's the first page of. Uh, that's uh, one of the pages that made me decide to work on a new publication so that it could be better known. But okay, so I will uh, go on speaking of the context. As Monfort had to contribute to his upkeep, he had a part time job in the house library, which proudly demonstrated that it received all recently published books in theology. Louis Marie, as we know from seeing his writing in the library registry had the responsibility of filling in the name of authors, titles of books, and dates of publication. We also know that from his earlier years, 
Louis-Marie had a profound devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Although he received all and noted all books that arrived in the library, he paid special attention to those devoted to the Blessed Virgin. As a matter of fact, he collected a few blank pages that he tied together using a needle and thick thread and started writing quotes, at first writing only on the right-hand side of the papers. The content. Some of the authors that Louis Marie favored for note-taking were the following. Louis Marie, Louis François d'Argentan, who wrote theologic and spiritual conferences on the greatness of Mary. From this author, he gives special attention to the 17th conference that deals with Jesus living in Mary. François Poiré is another one. This is an author that leaves a great impression on Louis Marie, especially because of what he writes on the triple crown of Our Lady. Bernardin of Paris, a Capuchin friar who died just a few years earlier, who wrote largely on the communion of Mary. Bernard of Siena from the 15th century, who wrote on the very holy heart of the Virgin Mary. Antoine Boissieu, a Jesuit priest who died a few years earlier, who wrote on the Christian predestined by a devotion to Mary, Mother of God. Boissier also had a book of meditations on the gospel for each day of the year. Henri Marie Boudon, who was still alive and who had his own very marked originality in that he was the precursor of the devotion to the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary. It was in this author that Louis Marie was to copy the title God Alone, dealing with the holy slavery of the admirable mother of God. Then Francois Bourgoin of the 17th century, who wrote on the truths and excellencies of Jesus Christ. And we continue on with a few more. Jean-Baptiste Crasset, a Jesuit priest who died just a few years earlier. A large number of quotes from this author who wrote on the true devotion to Mary, referring to testimonies of the fathers of the church. Cardinal de Beruel, who introduced Montfort to a Marian theology incorporated in a profound Christocentrism. For Montfort in Beryl, he found that the identity of the consecration of holy slavery with the perfect renovation of the baptismal vows is beyond doubt. Johannes Cartagena, from the beginning of the 17th century, who wrote on the devotion to Mary and particularly on the Holy Rosary. Pierre Grenier, a layman, who recently published a book on an apology of the devotees of the Holy Virgin. This very important book was a direct refutation of the Marian Monita by Adam Wiedenfeld, published in 1673, which aroused a fierce controversy in the church. Raymond Jordan, who lived in the 14th century and chose for himself something very interesting. He called himself idiot. Yes, idiot. A favorite, he was a favorite of Louis Marie, who cites numerous quotes, especially from his book on the contemplation of Mary. Saint John Eudes, founder in the 17th century of the Eudists, 
and of the Institute of Our Lady of Charity. In this author, Louis-Marie finds a specialist of the contemplation of the mercy of God. It is said that while contemplation the heart of Mary, John Eudes discovered the heart of Jesus and the love that exists between the two. At a time when Jansenism seemed to install a pessimistic vision of the human heart, John Erd is sure that the human heart is the natural place of God's love. And just a few more, Jean-Jacques Ollier, a very important man, the founder of Saint Sulpice. His spiritual letters and other books containing a missionary outlook left a lasting impression on Louis-Marie as much as his prayer, O oh, Jesus living in Mary, come and live, and you know the rest. Then there's Jean-Baptiste Saint-Jur, a 17th century Jesuit who writes on the knowledge, comprehension, and love of the Son of God, and other books from which Louis-Marie copied many quotes. Pierre-Antoine Spinelli, also a 17th century Jesuit, who wrote many books on Mary, the throne of God, the city, the paradise of God, the seat of wisdom, etc. And finally, for this list, Antonin Thomas, a Dominican priest of the 17th century, who wrote on the mystical rosebush of the Holy Virgin Mary, giving also a method for praying the rosary. There are others, but I thought that would be enough to give you a taste of the contributions of the quotes of these authors. There are quotes in French and in Latin. The Latin quotes contain over 200 abbreviations, making it very hard to check out the originals. Father Raymond Carret of the Saint-Benoît du Lac Monastery in Canada was my extremely helpful translator from Latin to French. Louis-Marie often identified his sources at the end of a line or a paragraph. Uh, no, okay. Then Louis-Marie titled some pages as the subject stood out with quotes from different authors. Now, the, the titles were not necessarily at the beginning of the page. He may have written other things at the beginning and then just included a title here and there. And some of the titles are the following, The Greatness and Beauty of Mary, Mary as the Daughter of the Father and the Spouse of the Holy Spirit. She is matchless in grace and merits. Her Immaculate Conception and Assumption singularly blessed and queen of all virtues, the wonder of glory in her life and in her death, her power, protector of the church, her miracles, mother of mercy, and her union with our Lord. And these are just a few of the titles out of these 300 pages. Now, you see from the notebook, you must see the content as a whole, as it contains quotes from so many spiritual writers that appealed positively or negatively to the young Louis-Marie. Only a selection of these quotes will be used by him in his own later writings, as in the hymns and very later in his book on the Virgin Mary. Now, another interesting fact of this notebook is that it can be used for graphology study. Now that's interesting. You may notice 
from this page and from others that there are many different writings, but all these writings are the result of Louis-Marie writing first as a student and later throughout his life on the road or during retreats. May I suggest that if you are a student of graphology, Louis-Marie's writing can provide specific insight into what he was like as a person, what was his personality. Who made the notebook available to us? There were mimeographed books produced specially from the notebook in the 20th century. And it was not easy, but I found them in Rome, Montreal, and Leuven in Belgium, one of them signed by Father Pierre Eichler, who wrote that he had been made aware of a microfilm, perhaps lost because I have never been able to connect with it. Another mimeograph copy is signed by Father Alphonse Bossard, but this the father also used the work that had already been done by Father Akiller and added to it by his analysis. There is also a transcript by Father Battista Cortinovis, and there seems to be one or two more that are not signed. One mimeographed book notes the original page numbers from the manuscript. Another identifies each quote of one or more lines, preceding it with one or two stars. The two stars indicating that this quote is the first of a new page. I am also thankful to Father Ephraim Asolari, who at the request of Father Stefani and Suardi, photographed each page of the manuscript. And with some difficulty, Father Arnold was able to transfer each page uh, to me so that I could work with them. It allowed me to print a first book of these copies preserving the manuscript for musing use rather than for multiple manipulations. I don't know if you can see the book. Is the book, uh, you, can, you cannot see the book, I think. Huh? I tried to show it to you. Now, the book for the notebooks format. The first official description of the manuscript seems to have been made at the beatification process. The remnant of a red wax seal indicates that this manuscript was submitted along with other documents to the consultants of the process of beatification. Among other things, this consultant writes that, and pay attention because what he writes is awful. It is, he writes, it is a very imperfect work, or rather a mere collection of student notes not yet compiled of the text of the Holy Pic Scriptures and of foreseeable concepts. I couldn't read everything because of the weakness of my eyes, because many things were written in smaller and more difficult to read characters." End of quotation. The promoter of faith speaks of this type of book and then which is rather another type, the pages reason, um, reaching a height of such a, a height and he's wrong in that too. And an unfolded leaf is 20 centimeters right wide. For his part, Father Eichler describes the format of the notebook and establishes a numbering of quotations preceded, as I said, by one or two stars. He notes the pages without text, the general division and the outline of the notebook. 
He writes, and I quote, for other writings as for his hymns, Monfort will use real notebooks, that is, books composed of several assembled booklets. Here, he used sheets folded in half tied with a simple cord. Originally, the number of sheets was to be 80, the outside forming the cover. This sheet has been replaced by a cover of gray-yellow paper. Currently, the notebook still has 78 folded sheets and the back part of the sheet 79. The, num the pages were numbered later. The notebook, as it, it ex exists, has 314 pages. It is necessary to count the 92 pages, which have no text, and eliminate five pages containing text foring to the main subject. 217 pages remain, which have been analyzed in my second book of the newly printed notebook. One part is consecrated to the Blessed Virgin, comprising 199 pages scattered throughout the notebook. Another part is consecrated to Jesus Christ and our life in Jesus Christ, comprising only 11 pages from page 304 to page 314. And as I, re I can repeat that Montford copies quotes from different authors, but also the same author on different subjects. Eichler studied the different scripts. He concluded what we said earlier, that only one person wrote in this notebook. But if there is a great diversity of writings, it is that after his ordination, Monfort continued to add quotes found during his life. Speaking of writing, sometimes the young Louis-Marie faithfully copied the quotes, but sometimes he wrote them from memory. This made it difficult to find them, to, for us to, to find them in the books that he had read, not to mention that he sometimes made summaries of the paragraphs read. To verify these authors' quotations that Father Eichler and I made, apart from very rare cases, it was necessary to discover the precise edition of the work studied by the saint by entering the details of authors and publishers and the dates of the documents found. Louis Marie's method. As he learned from the ent entries in the library catalog of Saint Sulpice, Louis Marie followed the same method, that of writing page after page, only on the right hand side, odd numbers, and filling in the left side of the pages, even numbers as afterthoughts to complete some documentation. He followed this method from this notebook and also in the first part of his book of sermons and in his manuscript of hymns. From this result, an important fact, the left pages sometimes remi remained without text when there was nothing to complete. And you can imagine from the reading of somebody who is not aware of this and who reads from left to right and then goes to the next left page to right, there's no, you cannot follow the text because he goes from right to right to right and then sometimes back to the left. So it was hard to, to, to follow exactly what he was writing. What does the notebook tell us about the young Louis Marie? By rereading the notebook, here are some thoughts which do not seem dated by Father Bassard. And I cite this paragraph. What a thorough study of the notebook tells us about Montfort's personality, that he is an intelligent man who knows what he is looking for and what he wants. 
a hard worker, methodical and constant in his research, a spiritual, more inclined towards what will enable him to live his attachment to Christ and his Marian devotion, than to indulge in speculation for himself. Someone who is anxious to root himself in tradition, hence the importance of references to the fathers of the church through the works at his disposal. Someone finally who wants to transmit and justify a message and who accumulates for this the materials and arguments which will be useful to him later on. The notebook is not a work of Montfort in the sense of the other books that he wrote, as the love of eternal wisdom, the book of sermons, etc., the secret of Mary. In a broader sense, however, it can be considered an authentic work of our saint. Of our saint. Indeed, is not, it is not only a question of the material work of a copyist. He reveals himself in it as we have briefly tried to show. And what he reveals to us about his working method leads us to ask ourselves a question. Why would he not have proceeded in the same way for other themes that were particularly close to his heart, such as wisdom or even the holy slavery to Jesus through Mary? The 22-year-old young man that was Louis Medy arriving for theological studies in Paris carried in his heart a great fondness for the Blessed Virgin, which had been transmitted to him by his mother and his nurse. Having to earn money to finance part of his pension, he received a job at the St. Sulpice Library. Providence guided his steps and his readings. Louis Marie's main task, task, as we said, was to register titles and names of authors. And Louis Marie collected sheets to make a notebook to write the quotes that touched him the most and could be useful to him in the future. However, it must be noted, as we said again, I, I, I will, in this conclusion, I will repeat, re, repeat a few things. It must be noted that this notebook was to contain, above all, quotations from only his Marian readings and will sometimes appear in his hymns and almost 10 years later in writings. During the years preceding his ordination, Louis Medi discovered that Mary led him to Jesus and his consecration to Mary became a commitment to Jesus through Mary, and his prayer was transformed, O Jesus living in Mary. Thus, the mystery of the incarnation was placed at the heart of his spirituality. The quotations collected in the notebook show attention to the mystery of the love of Jesus in Mary in the incarnation up to the cross and the redemption and following the great Beryl and Jean-Jacques Ollier, he had identified his vow to Jesus and Mary with the vow of baptism. His notes to serve him in his pastoral service, Louis Marie wanted to bring as a culmination, the renewal of the baptismal vows as participation in the death resurrection. Now, this renewal included a negative part, renouncing the world, and a positive part, union with Christ through Mary. We see in the note notebook how Montfort studied in Pierre Grenier the devotion to holy slavery, and in Beryl, the conformity of holy slavery with the renovation of the baptismal vows, and how he then moves to union with our Lord and adherence to Christ in life as a member of the head, a doctrine that the Jesuit St. Jude borrowed from his master Birul. 
The fifth star that adorns the crown of Mary shines in the assemblage of natural perfections that mer make Mary the masterpiece of God's power, the marvel of creation, nobility of origin, incomparable beauty, sublime intelligence, goodness that pours out on all creatures. What about Christocentric quotes? There are few in this book. The passages borrowed from works dealing with Jesus Christ are mainly found together in the last 10 pages of a book which contains over 300. Is it necessary to give a special meaning to this fact? Should we, in other words, admit that Montfort was only late in becoming interested in Christology? Louis-Marie, in those years preceding his ordination, was a student of philosophy and theology. Had he not also had to read works related to his studies and his university work? Could it be that he had another notebook for Christocentric notes and the preparation of his student papers? What if we were to look for clues leading to finding another Christocentric notebook that could also have been started during the years of St. Sulpice? How much attention had Louis Medi paid when, from the first page of his notebook, taking notes from Cartagena, he wrote, thus occupying your thoughts with wisdom is perfect prudence, and he who watches to acquire it will soon be at rest and will soon possess it. This is a quote from the Book of Wisdom. In its first fifth page in François Perry Poiré is found the importance of the one who sent down the celestial dew, God the Word, in the world and who is located among others in the Old Testament like the cloud that is between heaven and earth. Also remember that the notebook was written in parallel with the Book of Sermons. However, in the latter, we find very few texts on the, on the Blessed Virgin. And on the other hand, alongside, alongside moral subjects, entire sermons on Christ. It must be stated that the young seminarian had not drawn up a plan when he began his job in the library. However, when the missionary Montford closed his notebook, probably in 1712, the very precise plan of his spirituality had grown in his heart in the undertaking of a sketch of Marian theology while his pen used the gathered materials. By grouping the texts of the notebook by theme and co comparing them with those of Monfort's main works, it becomes easy to see what he retained and what he left behind, how he used his notes, how he is inspired by them with a creative freedom, which has often enabled him to show real originality in arriving at his per personal spiritual synthesis. It is an indispensable instru instrument for discovering, discovering certain aspects of his personality. The first book printed of the notebook looks like this. On the right-hand side, you have a picture of a, a page of the manuscript. On the left-hand side, you have exact trans transcription of what is on the right-hand side. Be that as is may, from everything that I have uh, described, let us be happy to now have easier access to what we call now we now call um, his Marian notebook. In book two, this is what the pages look like: description, line by line. I, I should say quote by quote. 
as, as we see a star and a number, which is a new quote. And then under it, rather than putting it as notes at the bottom of the page, each quote has a description of where it was found, the author, and where you see a check mark is that either by Father Eichler or myself, that we have found these quotes and can uh, vouch for them. So, and then uh, that's is that we, uh, I, I usually call them the source, which is the author of that specific quote. So, we have a very big book as the second book printed uh, for the Marian Notebook. And that is what I had to tell you about Father de Montfort's notebook, which he started writing in 1695 until 1712. Thank you for being so patient listening to my work. Thank you very much, Sister Helen, for the very inspiring presentation and overwhelming details about Father de Montfort's uh, notebook, which is now known as Maya Notebook. I, I think uh, uh, many of us have uh, some uh, questions or uh, some insights on the presentation made by Sister Helen. So let us begin with our question and answer parts of this uh, activity. May I call on uh, Father Ernest from Uganda? Father, do you have a question for Sister Helen? Yeah, I'm here. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes, Father, we can hear you. Yes, Father. Yes, Father, we hear you. You hear me, okay. Yes, Father. Yes, um, I'm very grateful for, to have had this chance to listen to Sister Ellen. Sister Ellen, thank you for this presentation. I would like to acknowledge the efforts put in by Father Arnold in planning and executing this program. Thank you, Father Arnold. I do appreciate the presence of Father Fred. Father Fred, thank you for moderating the presentation today. It's great. Now, Sister Ellen, your presentation of Father de Montfort, Marian Notebook Discovery, Analysis, and Publication is indeed exciting and an important step in the research and sharing of the works of Montfort. I like the way you have started your presentation with a warning, and it's a warning that draws us to a reality that we have a gift from Montfort, that we have to dig deep, to go deep into this gift. This in itself provides an invitation to look at this notebook with a keen interest. So you, your beginning becomes an attraction to someone to look forward to this presentation. And indeed, it has been very good. Thank you very much. And you go on to place this notebook in context. And you rightly said that it's a work that started in the early years of Montfort as a seminarian. And it continued later in his life as a missionary priest. So this, in this, we see a work that is maturing. It will be important indeed in seeing the intellectual development of Montfort and the way his experience becomes a blessing to us, especially his profound devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary and many other themes that he develops. Your presentation is also good because your approach engages and stimulates a person to go deeper in the works of Montfort. You give a lengthy list of others that Montfort had a particular favor for. This helps us to know that at his disposal, there was a great deal of material. 
It also supports our understanding that Montfort relied on others of substance for, this, for his works. It is well noted that this notebook provides his sources for true devotion and the secret of Mary, and also it's spread through his main works. It is really a precious gift that leads us to acknowledge that we have before us a whole life's journey of exposure that involves study, that involves prayer, experience and practice in mission. And also in true devotion, he says he nearly read every book on devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary and talked to the most saintly and learned people of the day. And in number 41, he says that I shall quote one only the, the many passages which I've collected from the fathers and doctors of the church to support this truth. And when we look at the notebook in the light of the above quotes, then we begin to be opened to the reality of him not utilizing all the materials, as you, you put it, of the others as found in his notebook. We also see him using materials that suit his time and his audience. So we see Montfort very well acquainted with the heavy weights of the French School of Spirituality. What we learn here, therefore, is the person of Montfort and the gift of choice. He chose what he needed and what could be relevant to his audience at the time without betraying the intelligence and orthodoxy of the proper doctrine. The second aspect that you bring to us is that it, it exposes us to the originality of Montfort. With this, we truly appreciate that Montfort makes his works, looking at them through the eyes of the notebook, to be personal and original. With this in mind, we have to keep this notebook in the whole framework of the works of Montfort. Something of great interest also is your opening on the issue of graphology study. You engage a unique way of provoking a good interest in Montfort what he was like as a person and his personality. This gets my attention because for us to relate fruitfully with Montfort, we are called to understand who this Montfort is and what his personality is. He reveals himself in it and this becomes one of the tools available to us in the understanding of Montfort. The more we understand Montfort, the more we'll continue to appreciate his life, works and invitation to be men and women whom God has made his own, the way he puts it in prayer for missionaries number one. And then from your presentation, I also acknowledge the involvement of other people. You have in a special way appreciated the participation of people who have made this notebook available to us. It is good that these people are recognized and thank you very much. You mentioned several of them and we thank them. And in particular, you mentioned people who have devoted so much of their energy in this. Those who are still with us, thinking of Father Batista, thinking of Father Ephraim and those you mentioned. Thank you. The outgoing Father General Stephanie and Father Arnold, thank you for this humble gesture. Your subject matter is interesting. And thank you so much for your contribution. You have presented a topic that is not so much talked of and so personal to Montfort. You have put in a lot of energy, a lot of time in this research. You are opening us into the person of Montfort, his works, his sources, and motivation in helping us to grow in union with Jesus Christ through our mother Mary. Thank you very much, Sister Ellen. And Sister Ellen, I have a question that uh, I don't know if you considered it or the, 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 what it can, what could come out of it. When you look at some comments on the on the on the notebook, 
you find that there is an insertion on the rules on voluntary poverty among the patients that have been left blank. Those appears to have nothing in common with the other materials. Did you have a consideration of this also? Or what would you say about this? Thank you very much. That's my comment, sister, and thank you for what you have done. May I ask that you repeat the question just a little? Uh, you know that English is also for me second language. So oh. if you just speak a little, just for your question, a little slower so that I can understand it better. Rules on voluntary poverty. When Montfort, when you look at uh, the, the works of Montfort, the presentation in court alone, you find that rules on voluntary poverty are put aside. But when you look in the notebook, they come together. Is it, is it true? Is it, uh, what would you say about this? Am I clear or I have to repeat slowly then? Well, uh, if you're talking about poverty, Rules, rules on voluntary poverty, a text, a text on rule, rules on, on voluntary poverty. It's a text. In the text, there, there is very little in the notebook about this subject. I don't think there's anything about this subject in, uh, in the notebook. Okay. That is why I think that we are missing part of his uh, of his, um, and I would say another notebook, because um, it's impossible that right after his ordination, barely two years after his ordination, he writes the love of eternal wisdom. And he must have had so much material gathered to write this after sharing it with Marie Louise only. So he, he had to have notes. Uh, I cannot imagine that he just wrote freely the love of eternal wisdom without referring to anything. So uh, that is, I find that in that other missing book, we might find the answers to your question, but not in this notebook. Thank you very much. Thank you for that uh, question, uh, Father Ernest. And uh, anyone else who want to share their insights or have question for Sister Helen? Can I make yes, another sir. comment? Okay, um, I will. Uh, let me add that uh, your the interest in the notebook is one thing, uh, where you find where he got his ideas, but. Have you ever read and prayed the hymns from the first page to the last? That is one another reference book where you will really find his spiritual thought, his prayer, his uh, dealings with the people, with his pastoral work. So really in the hymns, uh, it, this is a much better reference book than the notebook is, because in in his real writings, in his letters, uh, you find exactly who he is and what he is about, and wh why he is such an original uh, spiritual director. We worked on the hymns in French last year. <laughs> Maybe uh, it would be interesting to hear them again. I don't know if you listened to, to some of the French uh, presentations, but uh, um, the hymns are something really to, uh, to be used to discover exactly who Father de Montfort is and what he was about as a spiritual accompanying accompanist. A, a guiding, a guide, really. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Helen, for that. Uh, yes, uh, Brother René? Uh, you are in mute. Uh, we can't hear you. Okay, yeah. okay. 
I'm coming. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one reflection that came to my mind as I was listening to Sister Elaine is, uh, I think we can see in uh, Montfort quoting all those uh, excerpts from other books, from other authors, we can see from the very beginning of his uh, commitment into priesthood, we can see his motivation. Uh, because we very often talk about his action and he was uh, such uh, an active man, but he found also the time to, uh, to, to, to uh, nourish himself with lots of readings, uh, readings in the Bible and readings of spiritual authors. And that impressed me this morning when I heard you, Sister Ellen, that how much motivated he was, uh, not only to act, but to uh, also uh, share his thoughts with other people. And thanks to that, uh, his thoughts are being shared even today. Thank you, Sir Elen. Uh, that, that was very interesting. Yeah. Thank you, Brother Lenny. Thank now, you, Brother Lenny. If, I, if I can come yes. back to the, um, to the hymns. Yes. There, there are trans English translations uh, of the hymns. But I must uh, say that I am not in accordance with the, the books that have been printed uh, in the past because they tried to translate in English the poetic forms of the, of the hymns that are not necessarily what Father de Montfort wrote. I have translated them myself in a new book and if I know that you are far away, it's difficult to mail out these books to you, but whoever wants my translation of the hymns, I can send them by email. And uh, the, the, my translation is a translation of the words of Father de Montfort. They are not poetic, they are ex exact translations. Thank you for that information, uh, Sister Helen. So those who want to have a copy of uh, the hymns translated by Sister Helen, no? uh, she is willing to send it to you via email. Yes. Yeah. Maybe later we can look at that, what we can do about, about with Father mm -hmm. Arthur. Thank you very much for your generosity, Sister Helen. Uh, any, anyone else who want to share their insights or reflection or uh, if you have question on the presentation? Hello, sir. Yes, uh, Father Arnold, please. Yes, Father Arnold. I have a question. Yes, Father Arnold. Oh, please. I heard you. Oh, Father Aloy. Yeah, Father Aloy first. Yes. Father Aloy yeah. from Thank Papua you. New Guinea. Yes, Father. Thank you. Good evening from Papua New Guinea. Yes, good evening, to Father. Sister Ellen. Uh, thank you very much for the nice presentation. Uh, I have two comments and questions as well. From the beginning of Montfort, since he ordained on the 5th of June, 17. Hundred. There were two important people who were influenced him, work with him, was uh, Claude de Poulat and John Baptist Blaine, and later on, Father Mulot. My question is mm -hmm. first, did any, any influences from them? Nothing appears in his notebook. Because when I... Montfort was moving, moving here and there, and then you no, know, he writes many things. He's never settled at the beginning, no, and there's 1776, 
until 712, you said. And he was moving here and there, rejection by any bishops, all these things. And then has time to write. But those two important men is important at the beginning. Any influences from them or just Monfort himself doing it or writing it? Thank you. We find nothing in the notebook that uh, has an imprint of his uh, friends Poulard des Places or, or Blain, because we, yes. we see nothing. They have not written anything. He, these are quotes from theologic books that he read, not from conversations with his friends. And as for Father Mulot, uh, Father Mulot was not very much aware of his sainthood or his spirituality. We see almost nothing in Father Mulot that um, refers to Montfort, except maybe for the use of some of his sermons after Father de Montfort's death. But um, it really uh, goes beyond Father Mulot uh, after Father de Montfort's death that we find one of the Father's general, who is Father Audubon, who was interested in his spirituality because of his link to Marie-Louise. So therefore, it is really after Montfort's death that we start seeing the influence and the discovery of him as being a saint. But it took a long time, uh, really a long time. It's the people that he preached to that, that uh, showed how, how long his influence was having uh, in the villages and the missions where he had been through. But during his life, his friends did not support him very much. As a matter of fact, when he meets uh, his friend Blaine and he traveled a long distance to see Blaine when Father de Montfort was already sick and Blaine made him walk from one city to the next uh, and and he he told him how he he wasn't really liked very much and that's why he didn't have a following you know very well that no priest accepted to follow him the people who followed him were the brothers and he had yeah. four brothers making vows with him in 1715 and 1716. But the priests, the, 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 the theologians and the, the priests in the missions where, with whom he worked uh, did not want to follow him. He was too hard to follow. <laughs> he, his dis discipline was difficult and we can, we can understand now by reading over 300 years later, Yes. Yeah, because <clears throat> for the cloud the Polats, he became the founder of Spiritun Spiritan Fathers. Yes. And we uh, have here in Pavinje, they saying that we inspired by writing of Monfort. Yes. Uh, so father, it's like kind of dialogue between Cloud the Polats and Monfort. And yeah. he founding that uh, Spiritan Fathers. Thank you. Yeah, the Father Pulat de Place was very important because he founded a seminary to train young men to become priests. And uh, Father de Montfort used his services to, to, to get priests out of that uh, training center. But, and yeah. he must have dialogued with him a lot because he was a very good friend. And Father de Montfort refers to him quite a bit, but uh, they were good friends. Actually, Father Poulard de Place died in 1709. So yeah. you see where he wasn't there for much longer when uh, Father de Montfort was still working. And in that year, 1709 is one of the years where Father de Montfort traveled to Paris to look for, for priests to work with him. 
he didn't find Thank you, Sister. Yes. Thank you, Father Abel. Thank you, Sister Helen, for that. Uh, anything, any, uh, anyone else? Uh, uh, Father Arnold? Thank you, Father Fett. Thank you very much, Sister Helen, for your efforts, for your constant uh, research uh, in Monfosan spirituality. I am curious after this uh, notebook of Monfort, which book of Monfort uh, you would like to uh, explore? If you have no idea, I would uh, like to suggest to explore on the book of sermons of Monfort. Thank you. Now I have a question. First of all, I want to thank um, Father Ernest for his uh, very comprehensive um, uh, comments on uh, Father, uh, Sister Ellen's uh, uh, presentation. Uh, the manuscript of uh, Monfort's book, which contains quotes from uh, spiritual writers, does not actually have uh, a title. Regardless of uh, the content of the quotes, the early uh, editors gave the book the name Kaye the Not or Notebook. You, based on its contents, give it a name Marian Notebook. <laughs> but in this way, you exclude the last 11 pages, which do not speak directly about Mary, but about Christ and the Christian life. In my opinion, it would be good if the English title for this book used the French name, Notebook, so as to cover the two sections it contains. And then in your presentation, you were uh, talking also about um, the possibility of uh, the existence of uh, another notebook of Montfort, uh, some, uh, something Christocentric. Now, my question is, is your uh, speculative question about the possibility of uh, a Christocentric notebook that Monfort wrote born out of uh, a dissatisfaction with what is now we have in our hands. We know that uh, these quotes, which uh, seem to speak of uh, Mary, were born out of uh, Monfort's concern on the place and role of Mary which is Trinitarian, Christocentric, and pneumatological. Monfort does not see Mary in isolation. This book of Monfort makes us aware of a Monfort study, which was uh, very intensive. Uh, he wanted uh, um, to discover the root of Marian dimension of, uh, uh, of a Christian spirituality. The root founded in the gospel, in the writings of uh, the fathers and mothers of the church, but also the saints. Uh, this was uh, explained by Brother Rene. It is like a uh, faith seeking enlightenment like what uh, Anselm of uh, Canterbury calls fides querens intellectum, faith seeking understanding. His efforts were also useful, as we know, uh, to face the Marian crisis that existed at the time. Uh, supported by this uh, research, Blanc tells us that while at St. Sulpice, Montfort spread true devotion to Mary. Thank you, Sister Ellen. You used the word dissatisfaction. <laughs> that will never be 
dissatisfied by Father de Montfort. Never, <laughs> never, never, never. No. <laughs> you are right. It was in a time where the, the, the knowledge of who exactly Mary was was very important because there, there, uh, some of the printing was so negative uh, about uh, the Virgin Mary that uh, maybe that's why there are so many authors who wrote about her and about her greatness. So it, I'm not dissatisfied. I think that he did a marvelous job of picking up the right quotes to, to, uh, to write about uh, the Virgin Mary. So, but it would be inter in the same way that a, a book by Montfort was found in the 18th century. Why could we not find another uh, manuscript somewhere? You know, after all, why not? Maybe if somebody from in France or, you know, that in your archives, uh, there might be something hidden there uh, that has not been picked up. A, a manuscript that that everybody thought was not useful. You know, you never know. But keep your eyes open, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Helen. And uh, we have a lot of insights uh, for today's uh, uh, spiritual encounter and uh, as we all know we uh, we are always um, wanted more to learn more about father de montfort no we cannot really uh, say no uh, that uh, we 100 percent know uh, father de montfort no every day is a learning experience every uh, 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 time we encounter him in his works, in his letter, is a new uh, knowledge uh, for all of us in our understanding about Father de Montfort. And as uh, Sister Helen said, uh, we are a lot of uh, resources no, to, to help us deepen uh, uh, this understanding about this great saint. And uh, he's telling us, and he's uh, suggesting to us to have time also to see and reflect about uh, the hymns of Father de Montfort, which will really help us also to have a deeper understanding of uh, the personality and the spirituality of Father de Montfort. And, uh, and as she mentioned, uh, there must maybe there is another notebook huh? <laughs> or a part of this notebook that uh, uh, Father de Montfort wrote no, uh, with his uh, time from 1695 to 1712. Uh, Sister Helen, uh, thank you very much uh, for everyone. No, um, we have we don't have enough time. No, even though we want to uh, explore more about this topic, but uh, we are limited with our time. So we may I request. Uh, Sister Jelly Fernandez from the Philippines to for the closing prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, dear God, for the greatness and beauty of our blessed Father as we traverse the writings of Saint Louis Marie de Montfort and walking even the pages of his life. May he be our guide as he was inspired by the saints. We thank you for this blessing and opportunity through the kindness of Sister Helen, Father Arnold, Father Ray, Father Fed, and the missionaries and brothers of the Son. May we, with your grace, have the fondness of Mary as our saint. May we continue by your grace to be faithful to our baptismal vows. And for some of us, uh, the day has been far spent, yet for some, our day has just begun. May the hymns of our founder be echoed in the lives we live. As we part, we pray. Oh Jesus, living in Mary, 
Come and live in your servants, in the spirit of holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the perfection of your ways, in the truth of your virtues, in the communion of your mysteries. Rule over every adverse power in your spirit for the glory of the Father. Amen. 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 the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hello. Amen. Thank you, uh, Sister Jelly, for uh, leading us for opening and uh, closing prayer for tonight's gathering. And uh, we also thank uh, uh, Brother Rene, Father Aloy, Father Ernest, and Father Arnold for their insights, sharing their insights, reflection, and for their questions. And uh, thank you to all of you who joined us for this. Uh, Montfortian Synodality, Montfortian Family in Southeast Asia with the theme, Father de Montfort's Marian Notebook, Discovery, Analysis, and Publication. And to say thank you is not enough to Sister Helen LeMay who helped us yes. discover more about our beloved founder, St. Louis Marie de Montfort and his spirituality and inspired us once again to follow in his footsteps as Montfortians of today. Thank you very much, Sister Helen. Thank you, Sister Helen. Thank you, Sister. Thank, thank you, Sister Helen. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you Sister Helen. Thank you, everyone, for those who join us. Thank you so much. Through YouTube, Facebook, and uh, those who are in the room, in this Zoom. Thank you very much. Thank you, Father. Thank Fred. you, Sister Ellen. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, Father. 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 Father Arnold and everyone. Thank you, Father Ernest. Bonjour, Father Arnold. Thank you, Father Arnold and Father Fed. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Jenny. Oh, thank you. Brother Arnold. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, really now that everybody is leaving, yeah. I can add uh, information. Hello, Dr. Sister Lien. Brother, <laughs> what information? Brother John Sister? Albert has asked me to translate yeah. the book that I wrote on uh, uh, Father de Montfort's uh, um, life through his uh, hymns. So I am in the process of translating this book which should be ready in a few weeks. And Brother John Albert can make use of it. He's the one who requested it from me. Very good. Wow, yes. wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Brother John. <laughs> Thank you, Brother John. Hello, sister. We have a brother, Samuel Joshua. Where are you from, brother? <laughs> 